What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome back to our final guided gameplay for the time being of Inkbound. And this time we are pulling out the Moss Cloak. And the Moss Cloak, in my opinion, is probably the strongest character in the game. Uh, not that the other characters aren't strong. As you've seen, we can do plenty of damage with all the characters. Uh, but the Moss Cloak has pretty insane damage potential if you know what you're doing with it. Uh, its crit build is incredibly potent. Its poison build is incredibly potent. Let's go Cinder. Uh, this is a character that most of the, the end game bosses, you can outright just like kill them, like kill them within four turns. Uh, so we have physical, Scavenger's Dash is considered physical, but this just marks enemies, it doesn't actually deal damage. And then we have Flurry. Uh, and the way this build works is every turn we get a Shuriken. When we Scavenger's Dash through an enemy, we get a Shuriken. Uh, throw just does damage, and the idea is building up shurikens and then using flurry, which unleashes all of them for a ton of damage. So, cloak of conspirator, not bad here. The three stacks of stealth, I mean, that's just going to give us uh, basically a big ability power boost on our first turn. And sure, we're not going to really be taking damage along with crit, but it's not the best. It's it's decent. Uh, bare bones and burden of wisdom don't really make sense with this build. So let's reroll. Ooh. Ooh, Whispered Imitation. Hmm. I mean, I could do a Poison build. Crit builds are pretty crazy, though. Let's do... Let's go for a Poison build. Poison builds can be pretty fun to do. And... Ooh, Distant Dash. It is really hard to pass up something like Distant Dash. Having access to that extra range is invaluable. Even though it's considered a common, it is something I pretty much always try to go for. So with a poison build, like most status builds, one of the most important things is going to be just damage mitigation. And playing Moss Cloak, well, we're not going to be looking for for stuff like, um, you know, spiked. We want to focus our damage mitigation on evasion. We want to just evade as much as possible. So I'm just going to hit that guy once. We will want to, don't have a good positioning for this right now. Dash through you, and I don't have enough shuriken to reach you both, but I'll at least kill you and prevent you from doing any more inky power buffs to our friends over here. So in this case, we're gonna dash and kill. And it's gonna hit us, that's okay. Let's take a little pop shot from him. game is already like crit chance. You want crit? I'm gonna go over here, activate the trove, and then go back and grab that augment. Oh man. And see this, here it is. This is the question. Do I want a poison build or do I want a crit build? Um, God, we're going after image. Even with a poison build, the thing is I need, I need mitigation. And this always gives us a stack of evasive. So every time I use that, I'm getting evasive, which is phenomenal. Um, and the common upgrade of precise with this is insane. Like, I, I don't even know how I should have gotten increased range on flurry, but that's, that's so good. So basic idea is we use this, we get free evasive, and we're going to get critical charge in a binding. But not only are we going to get critical charge, because we have precise, we're getting an extra 100% critical hit damage on that binding as well. So... In a sense, we give ourselves a free, like, triple damage crit. It's very, very potent, especially if we combine it with something like Flurry. Which I know it says random binding, but for the most part, it feels like it's usually the next binding used. Maybe that's just, uh, I don't know why, but it does, it certainly feels like that's the case a lot. So we're going to dash through, make sure he gets marked. Crit charge. And flurry. Oh, look at the damage. Look at the damage. Just dead. Dead. Didn't even need to worry about the poison. Just dead. Mm, 
you're gonna die to poison. I can't reach him. Well, let's just kill these two. Let's see the damage difference there between a marked and a non-marked enemy. I should have killed you. What am I doing? Uh, well, we'll kill you. We'll grab that next turn. But okay, we got a, we got a enough of a shield that I'm not concerned about it. Very, very strong damage. Um, man, this game is just, it's like, it's teasing me between poison builds and crit builds. Um, let's go poison damage. And movement per stack, I don't really need. Dash, let's go basic poison throw. It has some good synergy for the later. And we're gonna go sea breach. Quite early in the game. Gotta love me a good sea breach. And epic vestige. Sounds phenomenal. Ooh, ooh, I'm defeating an enemy gain a shuriken. Very nice. Uh, now this, now we're, we're, we're full risky business. We're going in with nine health. But if there's any class that can pull it off, it's gonna be the moss cloak. Of damage output there. We're gonna go ahead and pop that right now. I'm gonna be using everything at my disposal here. smart about which targets I'm attacking. Got three stacks of shuriken. Kill those two. Take the stack of evasive. There we go. Got out of it without taking a hit. And second beat of Ivy, huh? Shattered Crown can be really strong with this, because then we can essentially hit with a Shuriken. And then, um, following up with that, we're able to hit with Flurry. Um, let's go Poison Tip Throw on that. That just means that on a first hit with this, we're going to be doing eight stacks, which is very, very nice. It's a lot of poison damage going out. Damn, and the game's giving me poison vapor too. This is gonna get busted in a second. Mighty vapor, an extra 10 stacks. Oh, or prepared dash. Free movement at the start is also very strong. Um, but 10 stacks of poison is too. Let's go 10 stacks of poison. And let's go wider area of effect. Now, like I said, the big thing with a poison build is this is all about damage mitigation. Because I can do tons of damage. But if I'm not careful, it's very, very easy 
to get myself killed with this. By, uh, basically by just not being able to survive the turn for the poison to go off. So more than anything, that's what you gotta keep in mind when you're playing a build like this. Like, those guys, they would have died no matter what, but I would have gotten hit pretty hard. Definitely gonna hurt a lot. I might be able to finish him. Oh man, that was close. That was close. Ooh. Oh man, I'm so torn here. So I'm not a fan of sharpshoot in general, just because the max range is, it makes it much more situational in its usage. Um, poison shot, obviously with the poison build, this is phenomenal. Just tons and tons of stacks of poison. But in general, I like to get ricochet here because we don't have a lot of AOE with this build and ricochet solves that. We're gonna go for poison shot and just hope for the best. Um, spinning throw, so this is this is a pretty interesting one to discuss here. So on hitting, hit an additional time, minus 15 damage. You know, it deals 20 damage, so the idea is we're hitting for 20 and then for 5. But keep in mind that this is all about just inflicting poison now. So with that additional hit, we're throwing this out. And let's see, we're going to do 15 stacks of poison plus the initial 8 that we're doing. So right there, we're getting 23 stacks of poison. And then on the second throw, we're going to be doing... Uh, 15 plus 2 plus 2, so 19 stacks of poison. So it will very, very quickly build people up almost to the same level as Poison Vapor. Uh, in this case, Poison Vapor is now basically our AoE. And, oh god, the poison damage, but I need the health. I need the health. I want the poison damage, but I need the health. Uh, so this is basically our AoE application. This is our, our single target application, but we still need to play smart about it, you know. Because right now, our only real mitigation is this single stack of evasive that we get. So we do have to be really conscious of that as we're playing to make sure that we're not, you know, oh, everything's poisoned up, it's definitely going to die. And it's like, yeah, but you're not going to survive the turn. Uh, so let me, here's what we're going to do. We're going to hit you with that. I want to get this though. Let me grab that. That should be close to enough to finish you off, I think. I think that's too dead. See, that's the thing. Even though I killed him though, that enemy still took the pop shot on me. And that is the tricky part about running a build like this. But you gotta make sure you are doing the damage that you need while not getting pop shot by some enraged enemy. And this is where the evasion comes in, you know, if I didn't proc my dodge right there, that thing was gonna slap the shit out of me. It's about to. I mean, this thing's gonna die, but it's gonna hurt. They're both dead. It's about to hurt. Mm-hmm. 
It's gonna be really strong, but it's not gonna really make sense for this build. Um, it's time each turn to flick through. Let's do that. You know, this isn't a burn build. We can add the poison in on top of the burn. I'll take the health. We're already doing so much poison damage. I need empowerment. I really just need more stacks of evasive. Speak of the devil. Which this is good. Four stacks of poison per hit. You know, it's an easy way to, to build up poison, but I don't really need that right now. Uh, evasive properties is what I absolutely need more than anything. And then I think we're also going to go cool down on this. Just getting that up sooner would be really useful. <sighs> but I could get like an epic augment on it later. That would save. Let me go this. We'll get some shield. Gives us an alternative approach to mitigation on top of the evasion. Because crit builds are very straightforward. You're just going to explode stuff with them. Quick 40 stacks around the board. Let's go there. And there. And uh, we'll just, well, screw it. Do this. Enjoy those poison stacks. Nothing like a quick thousand damage. dead you're dead i think you're both dead yeah, we should be good there i don't know if the cannon's dead yet oh no it is there we go there pop this get my evasion i didn't even see you over there it's too busy poisoning everything to the stack or crit chance and crit damage or the inkly map inkly map is it's good but it's i don't know I, I don't like the dynamic nature of it so the idea is as you go down your ability power is going down and usually the way this build works is i'm going to like poison something then i'm going to dash then i'm going to flurry so by the time i actually use it i've already kind of blown through most of my load uh, so let's let's add a little bit of crit damage on because that'll also synergize with poison shot. And as for our reward, your turn reduce all cooldowns by one. We gain one will for each binding on cooldown. Um, with two fours, Fountain of Creation has some pretty strong potential here. And then three on that is really nice. Or free poison vapor is really nice too. Let's go with that. Hmm. So obviously we're doing poison. This seems like the no-brainer, right? Ten damage and ten stacks of poison, then consume uh your shuriken for ten. So we're we're basically throwing this out and getting like sixty stacks of poison. But we already have a ton of poison buildup on targets, so I'm not really concerned about that. So instead, let's reroll and see what else we can get. And in this case, we have Refraction, which is four stacks of evasive. The only thing that sucks is on turn start, we lose all stacks. Uh, I could go here, give me double critical, double evasive. Let's do that, let's do blur. Which, by the way, a lot of those where it's like, you know, your ally, those also will impact you. Uh, here we're going to go Tethered Shrine just because we don't have a lot of Quillings right now. And one permanent shield. Or top my health off. 
Let's go with some permanent shielding. Which it's a little, it's a little, you know, you wouldn't realize it just saying one shield. You think like maybe it's plus one, but going over here, you can see amount of shield you start with. So we're always going to start with shield. It's not, it's not exactly clear that that's the case until you uh, really look into it. Okay, uh, so a lot of evasive shit going on. Let's go ahead and pop y'all off with more poison than your body has room for. We're gonna put some of that in as well. And more poison. I think you're probably dead. 1656. Oh yeah, you're definitely dead. See, this is actually one of the more deadly rounds because it's these little dudes. They're only going to do two damage, but it's like two damage, two damage, two damage, two damage, two damage, two damage. And that will very quickly add up in the amount of damage that they're doing to us. I think we are looking pretty good now. Um, hmm, yeah, I'll take the hits. I'm gonna save this to, to pull Blur off pull down in an emergency. right now is pretty close to that emergency. on screen at the moment. This is the tricky thing. Like, that's the amount of poison and burn that we have. Um, no doubt about it, these enemies are dead. But it's getting through enough of them to where I'm not worried about my survival. So that's the problem with the pure poison build. Is you're gonna take pop shots like this. Like, you're gonna do insane amounts of damage. It's, it's very easy to come out on top, but absolutely have to have that mitigation. Uh, leftover shuriken are no longer consumed. What? I haven't seen this before. Number of shuriken in Moscow. So I think this means I just always stay at five. But regardless, Verdant Blossom is phenomenal because that's a, another... Uh, type of mitigation that's just going to help us out here. We'll go prepared dash. And I'm looking pretty good. Let's go, uh, let's go tethered. I'd rather save my money for a very late game carver, just in case I can get those Omic Orb Walkers again. Typically, I'd say poison, but two ability power is, uh, it's just flat 20% damage across the board. Really hard to pass that up. The captor. Well, first, let's. Well, I can hit everybody. We'll hit everybody. Then, I'm gonna go over here. I'm going to. Kill the little one. Give you more poison stacks, even though you have damage mitigation, everything's about to die, so not exactly. A lot, a lot of damage is going out though. Um. 
That's a lot of poison. I might be able to just kill this thing outright, I wonder. I wonder how many stacks it would take to do it. Let's see. With your damage mitigation, let's find out what happens here. Almost. <laughs> and you're dead. Goodbye. There's just a quick 3,000 damage. Uh, 36 damage in a distant area, 30 stacks of poison, then deal poison damage, 12 stacks in a single area, double the stacks of poison. So, typically, I like to get Toxify, which did not pop up. Uh, it's basically like a, a, a mega version of poison that you can get on Poison Vapor, where the stacks will transfer to a target. Um, Putrefy, really, really strong. Because keep in mind, this is going to detonate the poison essentially on a target. So this gives us the burst so we don't have to survive through a turn. Poison dart, honestly, to me it's more of a trap. Uh, I think with a build that's not as poison focused, the idea of doubling stacks of poison sounds really nice. But like the reality, you know, most of the time, I'm not going to need to double stacks. Something's going to die before those double stacks would actually be valuable. And on a boss, it's going to cleanse the poison off. So poison dart doesn't really work all that well in that instance. Whereas putrefy, on the other hand, stuff is dead. Uh, especially with something like putrid poison. So we'll use that. That'll give us some, some detonation capabilities, which, uh, you know, we're, we're not nearly as concerned now with having to, to mitigate. We're just, we're going to blow stuff up. So case in point, I would do that damage upright. So let's do this. Right out of the way. There we go. So you can see what I'm talking about. Just oh, oh, you're dead now. Um, we're, we're good there. Take your singular pop shot. The two can die. Good enough, yes it is. Very careful about our positioning here. Controlled explosives is typically really good, but going up against Cinder, it's not going to really help us that much. Um, let's go T for two. Go T for two and we'll ignore Shatter. Shatter's not going to be that valuable for us anymore. This T for two is just going to constantly heal us. So let's see. Do we get the Omic Orb Walkers? No. One stack of Shocked. Oh, Bottle Whirlwind. Hell yes. We don't even really need Beat of Ivy. We have so much poison going out at this point. Um, I guess we could, no, well, yeah, more poison damage. I'll take that over the burn. I'm not that worried about the burn. And then I do have enough. What else do you have on deck? I'm critting gain a shield. Eh, let's just top off our health. Bottle Whirlwind. Between having Bottle Whirlwind and Blur, we have more than enough evasion to fully stack our poison up. On top of that, this being Putrefy, we have a, a detonate type effect on poison, so. 
basically it's over. There's, there's zero real risk to us anymore at this point. I'm gonna give you that. Look at that. Look at, look at that. Look at that. One, one throw, and we're doing 1,200 damage to this guy. One damage short of killing him, which is <laughs> kind of funny. Um, boom, boom. Let's go. Boom. That's a phase shift. You actually got me with a putrefy. And you went in the air this time. Um, I want to shoot. Well, there's no real point messing with you. You're, you're about to die anyway. Let's just hang out over here and, um... I'll just hang out right here. That's fine. Oh, you didn't die. That's impressive. I thought for sure you were dead. that cinder pox. I mean, it's funny. Flurry doesn't even do anything anymore. Um, but I'm... You might be dead here. Yeah, I think you're dead. Well, GG. Yeah, but now you're seeing why at the start of this run, I said Moss Cloak is one of the most broken classes in the game. I mean, the the poison synergies in this build are insane. And what's crazy is typically I do a crit build. Typically, I would, you know, I would do my flurry, and my flurry would do that entire final health bar. Um, poison is just as strong, potentially even stronger, but like I said, it's more conditional because you're going to have to have that evasion. You need the evasion, uh, you know, getting bottled whirlwind, getting blur along with those extra stacks. You know, as long as we can survive long enough that poison procs, stuff dies. But obviously having putrefy there, that kind of uh, sped things up a little bit. Uh, but either way, with a another victory in the bag, we're gonna wrap things up. Uh, so obviously I'm gonna still be playing a ton of Inkbound. I've been playing a ton of this on Steam Deck. It's been my go-to game. And I know we do have the roadmap now with more content coming. So every time there's a content update, I uh, plan on coming back to this just because I've been having a ton of fun with this game. So either way, thanks for tuning into this series. Hopefully it uh, taught you something about your favorite aspect. And otherwise, I guess I'll just say I'll catch you all later.